right, everybody, our topic here is going to be the pheochromocytoma, which, by the way, is quite rare, but has a tendency to pop up on exams. They just love this one. So you'll need to be aware of how to diagnose this as well as the treatment plan, because um, it is very specific to this disorder. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or in the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already stepped up to donate. And also feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates as I put more and more videos up. I try to put one up um, three, four times a week or so. So as I mentioned, pheochromocytoma is rare. It is a tumor of the adrenal gland uh, that secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine. And as you know, that comes from the adrenal medulla. So this is a, a tumor of the adrenal medulla. Um, the presentation of pheochromocytoma is not as dramatic as you might think. And often the presentation, and this will get thrown at you on exams, looks a lot like panic attack um, insofar as they can get the nausea and anxiety and impending sense of doom and they can even have some uh, sort of somatization if you will um, where they get the abdominal pain and maybe chest pain and stuff like that however what we see with a pheochromocytoma is, number one, it lasts longer. Panic attacks typically last in the seconds to maybe minutes. Whereas with a pheochromocytoma, those episodes are going to last quite a bit longer. Next, with pheochromocytoma, they're going to have severe hypertension. Now, with a panic attack, you might jump up, you know, 20 points. You might go up to 140 over 90 or 150 over 100. Uh, with a pheochromocytoma, you're going to get much higher than that. And then a headache. Uh, so, you know, some of these things you may see with panic, uh, but when you start to see things like super high blood pressure and a headache, and then it goes away you know, after several minutes or hours, uh, you really need to be thinking of pheochromocytoma. Now, it can also resemble thyroid storm. And so that's where the history is going to be important. Pheo is associated with a variety of hereditary neuroendocrine disorders. Uh, however, these are unlikely to come up on step two or step three. If you're taking step one, you should be aware of these associations. Uh, so definitely suspect this in a younger patient who's got a history of panic attacks that are lasting a little bit longer than we expect and that are associated with these sympathetic features like high blood pressure and especially, not that it's a sympathetic feature, headache. So these patients will often appear panicked. Uh, they are often flushed and sweating. They, they're not in a good place. Um, so uh, what you're looking for here are, again, the sympathetic symptoms uh, alongside very severe hypertension. If you are suspecting a pheochromocytoma, then what you want to do is rule it out because this is a disorder that is treated in a very specific way. And so you want to make sure you know what you're dealing with before you go ahead and treat it. Because if you're dealing with thyroid storm, for instance, you're going to treat this completely differently. And in my talk on thyroid storm, I go into that, why it's so important you be able to distinguish these two. And obviously, if you're dealing with a panic attack, you're going to be giving benzodiazepines. Um, so you, you need to understand the difference. So the best initial test uh, is to get a plasma metanephrine level. You can also get a urine metanephrine level, uh, but plasma metanephrine levels are uh, described as the best initial test. It's also very highly sensitive. So if you have a normal metanephrine, it rules out pheochromocytoma. Um, now, uh, there are other tests that you can do. Um, a lot of times you'll see metanephrines and vanilla mendelic acid as your two markers for pheochromocytoma. Uh, now, the uh, best initial treatment is going to be an alpha blocker. This is so important. So you've got to know you start with an alpha blocker. Once the blood pressure is controlled, which usually takes a couple days, you move on to a beta blocker, and then you do surgery if it's possible. 
Okay, so alpha blocker first, phenoxybenzamine. Beta blocker next, propranolol. Then you need to work the patient up for surgery. And what do we do? We need to make sure that there are no metastases. Because if there are metastases, and about 10% will have metastases, they cannot get surgery. So we only do uh, we only do surgery for patients who have a pheochromocytoma limited to the adrenal gland. Um, and so um, you have to know that these patients do not have a metastatic disease before you can uh, send them off for surgery. Uh, the best initial test to look for metastasis is in fact a CT of the abdomen. MRI and MIBG, which is a nuclear test, they are more accurate, but CT is the best initial test. Uh, perhaps the surgeon may want to do more, but as far as you go, if uh, you're working the patient up for surgery, you go with the CT. These are usually large tumors. They're heterogeneous. There may be evidence of necrosis just due to their size and some cystic change. So we'll just take a look here. Um, so I'm going to change my pen color to red. Um, so where is the tumor here on the left? It's right there. Okay, what about here on the right? Right there and right there. Bilateral. 10% will be bilateral. They're usually associated with those... Uh, with those hereditary conditions. So again, you see uh, this sort of cystic heterogeneous uh, appearance to, to these tumors. And then again, here's another very nice coronal view. You can see the tumor here and a very massive one here. These are obviously different patients. So to recap, pheochromocytoma is a rare tumor that secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine. The classic triad is an episodic headache, sweating, and tachycardia. There will always be hypertension. The best initial test is pl plasma catecholamines, although urine catecholamines are more accurate. The best, they're the most accurate test is the MIBG scan, but CT is the best test to confirm the presence or absence of metastasis and then treatment, so important. Start with an alpha blocker. Once you get control, move to a beta blocker. Then get your CT and work them up for surgery.